Cult Radio. All right, welcome to this week's edition of Working the Web to Win. I am your host, Carl Weiss. With me in the studio is Hector the Connector Cisneros, and today we have our special guest, Paul Norse, who is a uh, security specialist. How are you doing today? Very well. How about yourself? Just doing great, Paul. Appreciate you guys having me. No problem. Today, we're going to kind of touch on a topic which we had broached early in an earlier episode, just not quite as specifically, and it's about who's watching you in the age of digital surveillance, or what I like to say is Big Brother watching you. <laughs> you know, we've all heard about George Orwell in 1984, you know, and I'm here to tell you, he was an optimist, okay, because yeah. we're going to show you some stuff that's just going to just rock your world as far as who's actually out there putting the bead on you on a daily basis. But before that, we do that, I'd like Hector to uh, announce our call-in numbers just in case uh, you want to join the conversation. So for our guests out there, the call-in number is 213-943-3808. It's 213-943-3808. Of course, you can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+, and about another dozen websites if you want to really check us out. So, And we'd also like to thank our sponsors. We have uh, MedMasters, who runs one of a very specialized yeah. social network for the medical industry. As a matter of fact, they're the only social network for the medical industry. Wow. Certainly and the big gun. Yeah, and, uh, and also Tub King and Senior right. Tub, who makes very specialized bathtubs for senior citizens. And they also make the most beautiful call foot tubs that you could ever bathe in. As a matter of fact, a lot of big movie studios like to buy them and use them in their movies. So. Huh. Okay, well, I'm going to take us to start the show off. Uh, let, let's kind of rewind the tapes a little bit, because if you remember, a few weeks ago, we were talking about, you know, the NSA sticking its foot in it right. and getting busted, of course, you know, with the Snowden flap and... All the, the texting and all the crazy stuff. All the stuff that's going on. But what most people don't realize is that's just a tip of the surveillance iceberg. Right. Uh, because for people that have been keeping an eye on what's going on in the U.K., I mean, right now they say London alone has over a half million closed-circuit television <laughs> Largest cameras. in the world, absolutely. Yeah. They say they say have something like, uh, um, for every 11 people, they have a camera yeah. in London. I mean, in England, period. They got cameras everywhere. Yeah, I think they have something statistically you're caught on camera there over 50 times throughout right. a day as, as uh, a civilian. You can't walk out and spit without being, you know, That's seen on the camera. Pretty incredible. <laughs> and, of course, after we had the Boston bombing, uh, we're trying to do the same thing over here. I mean, because you're seeing cameras sure. popping up everywhere. Every time you look up, whether you're, you're uh, at the mall or you're stopped at a light, well, what do you see looking back at you? Not one, but usually a bunch of cameras. Okay, when you go to Walmart, they got like 12 cameras up on the top, yeah. and then as soon as you walk in, they got another 12 inside. Well, you know, having been in the casino industry for many years, we were used to that kind of thing. I mean, because most casinos are actually better protected than Norad. I mean, when you walk oh, in yeah. there, there's a one camera. There's like thousands of those puppies running around. And they've got entire banks of, of uh, TVs up there with personnel that not only do the people uh, know how to pick out who's, you know, trying to make the hit on them, but also, guess what? They have a lot of software now that can do yeah. the work for them. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, again, the next generation, and even in the retail market, will be the software changes, mm -hmm. not the hardware that they have. So they'll be implementing facial recognition, so when a person is walking by a product or something like that, they'll recognize them and say, hey, we got this goodie for you. You know, the kiosk will automatically adapt for that person and so on. Well, yeah. let's, let's bring in our expert here, because that's why we invited Paul well, to the party. Kind of to tap on that, I mean, hardware is evolving as well. Um, you know, what we're seeing more than anything, you talk about casinos, I had mm -hmm. to chime in there. Um, what we're really seeing is a transition from the analog resolutions right. to HD resolutions or megapixel resolutions, mm -hmm. which, you know, we, we make a lot of items or manufacturers make a lot of items to be able to transition that with infrastructure pieces, yeah. but the HD video quality is really what's taking flight now. Yeah. And it used to be in the old days, they would take a picture and they'd have to like render it about 500 yeah. times to figure out oh, what it was. It was really grainy. You know, yeah. you'd see some of the, especially like when they were doing like uh, store surveillance and things oh, like yeah. that. Yeah. Even yeah. if somebody did stick you up, it was hard to even recognize who they yeah. were because yeah. the pictures were just so poor. Yeah. And yeah. we're really transitioning from that. I mean, we get very high resolution usable uh, images nowadays, which help in the poker world and against fight crime, obviously. Yeah. Um, but well, you know, the, the most interesting part, not to interject there, but 20% of our market's only tapped. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we look around, we see cameras going up on every street corner, we see them going up on all these mm -hmm. businesses, but believe it or not, statistically, only 20% of our industry, our, 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 our environment, or you know, is, is actually protected by video surveillance. It's kind yeah. of astonishing. In the U.S., it's, we're, we're, not, we're not the leading edge no. of the video surveillance world, no. but 
we have lots of other kind of surveillances they do. So we got more drones than anybody. Yeah. You know, we have a lot of different sound devices. Mm -hmm. Our highways actually have quite a bit of surveillance. Yeah, yeah, we have a lot, uh, a lot of mesh network infrastructure on those highways and and wi wireless IP video. But before we get real deep in, Paul, why don't you tell us a little bit about you and your company? Um, I'm with Security Center USA. I'm the vice president there. Uh, I've actually been with the organization about 10 years. We were founded in 99 here in Jacksonville, Florida, locally owned and operated. Uh, we actually cover all of Florida and Georgia. We uh, really specialize in your small to medium businesses, a lot of residential homes, and quite an enormous amount of government agencies from courthouses um, to transportation authorities, uh, even city halls and things on those lines. Um, but really, ultimately, we have passion for protecting people. Uh, video is probably our most predominant product line we carry on top of access control and burglary and things on those lines. Um, and, and we've seen a tremendous increase in video. Um, really, just probably 2013 was, was our highest ranking year from a revenue perspective. Okay. Um, and 14 so far the last month has been record breaking. So, you know, video is moving. Yeah. It, it, is, it is emerging. Speaking and it's of moving, moving, you've probably seen some of the little drones yeah. that they've got. I mean, absolutely. You know, it's, it's amazing what you can do with a quadcopter today. Yeah. And some of these drones are very sophisticated. Oh, yeah. And, and again, for our listeners, if, if you go on probably Friday or Saturday mm. to work in the web to win on, on YouTube, you'll be able to see the videos that we have on there for you. Um, you know, we're, we're talking about surveillance and all these other kinds of things. And, you know, the book, George Orwell's book, 1984, comes to mind immediately. And what's very different about the idea of George Orwell's book was like one big brother, one big seeing eye mm -hmm. that was watching everything. Absolutely. And the reality of today, we don't really have that. We have what we call more well. That's right. Everybody. You have George. Well, you have lots That's of different right. things watching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's not just the government. I right. mean, everybody's out oh, yeah. got their eyeball on you today, right? Yeah. From big business to you know, it could be you got personal stuff. That's right. A lot of personal Google stuff. glasses yeah. and oh. cell phones <laughs> watching you, and <laughs> and you got your own little quadcopter running around the neighborhood. <laughs> Heck, they're, they're tracking what you do on the web. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, te the technology has changed quite a bit because up until recently, I mean, basically the only people that really had that kind of technology was the military and, yep. and, and you know, obviously got law enforcement. Right. But now it's coming to a, a neighborhood near you because <laughs> pretty much anybody can get their hands on this stuff today. Yeah, you could buy a quadcopter surveillance camera system for three to five hundred dollars. Wow. So they're not very expensive and they're not hard to use. As a matter of fact, a lot of them use like your iPhone or whatever yeah. to control them. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I, I foresee not just businesses and government and all that kind of stuff that, we're, that most everybody gets all the sensational headlines. People are using absolutely. these. I mean, in, in the TV industry, instead of having to pay that helicopter pilot a whole bunch <laughs> of money to fly <laughs> over that thing, they got the little drone yeah. flies yeah. over, Cost them one third the amount of money to do it, and they save I, a heck of a lot. I think you money. go right back to what you guys were mentioning: is the technology piece of the equation. Mm -hmm. You know, with IP video emerging more and more, right. becoming more and more prevalent, the analog ability didn't allow us to really do those type of technologies. Right. It, it was more of a, as we call, on the edge recording status. Yeah, right. we, we couldn't outfit devices on those drones like you're talking about, and that that internet protocol allows us to virtually be anywhere with streaming video. Right. Yeah, only the military could do it up yeah. until the last four or five years ago. Yeah. When I was doing my research, I noticed that all this surveillance stuff, all this monitoring really falls into five categories. And uh, the first one I call like the home or personal category. Mm -hmm. you sure. know, your Google Glasses and your smartphones and your home surveillance Absolutely. system. Your, your home security system would fall into that. Absolutely. Then the next level would be businesses and business levels really cover several different things. It could be the business security surveillance system to protect them from theft absolutely employee theft mm -hmm. you know goofing off and all that kind Probably of stuff the largest issue when right. it comes to commercial internal and then also they're now starting to use it to sell products so absolutely. in some stores when you walk in their systems are tracking your cell phones absolutely so that they know your ip address is and they'll try and sell you goodies you know on the different kiosks and so on uh it's a big deal in korea because it's totally legal there they, they're all for it it's oh, somewhat it's big in England, soon. too, but it's coming <laughs> oh, yeah. here It'll soon. Here. Then, you know, the next level is really the government. You think about all the different kinds of surveillance things the government's doing. Right. And even though Obama plays lip service to saying that, you know, I'm not into all that surveillance, he loves that stuff. Oh, I absolutely. mean, he's really big into it. And, again, he's not pushing the NSA to stop anything. <laughs> I mean, originally when he was running for office, he said, I'm going to stop all that stuff. And, uh, eh. 
He wants all that stuff to happen even more. Yeah, but remember one thing, okay, because here's here's one thing that people don't really take into consideration, and that's the fact that the cost of these the, the equipment now has gotten down to the point where pretty much anybody can Absolutely. do it. So not only can the police watch you, you can watch them. In fact, remember Occupy Wall Street? Mm. They actually have their own drone now. It's called the Occupopter. Wow. <laughs> well, I mean, again, to my last category, I was talking about government surveillance, and yeah. there's two types of government surveillance. There's our government, that's right. and then there's everybody else's yeah, government who's right. yeah. also doing it. Just, we did the show on the Chinese hack attack. Well, before then, it was the Iranians, and before then, it was a Russian consortium. Take a number. I mean, <laughs> right. You know, they, they, and, and governments are spying on each other. I mean, the, one of the pictures I put in the old spy versus spy, yeah. you know, from the, mm -hmm. uh, I forget the, the cartoon that we used to be in the, the 50s. But... The last piece, the criminal element, is really the most scary part. That's right. Because I understand the government wants to watch us and all that kind of stuff. But the criminal element, their stuff doesn't cost anything. They have their black hat conventions every mm -hmm. year. And the reality is the more we become dependent on digital devices with, with alterable software, the more they're prone to hacking. And good hackers can hack pretty much anything. I don't yeah. care who it is, you know, what it is, they can hack it. I mean, there was a couple of really big articles on people hacking refrigerators. That's right. And wow. they were the using the refrigerators wow. to, to do spam. denial of services right. Right. That's crazy. <laughs> against companies. So imagine these refrigerators attacking you. Yeah, instead of having a midnight snack, you got a midnight attack. You know, midnight <laughs> hack attack. Wow, that's funny. Though. Well, that's the problem, okay, because as all of the uh, internet-enabled technology right. starts to invade everything, yeah. Okay, all these things, in fact, very few of them have any real protection. Yeah, everything's becoming IP compatible. Now right. I mean, thermostats and... When you, when you buy a tablet, let's just say a regular tablet, mm -hmm. most of them don't come with any kind of protection software That's on them right. whatsoever. Same way with all the smartphones. Absolutely. They don't come with protection built Absolutely. in. So if the smartphones and the tablets and the computers, which usually have freeware for a trialware mm -hmm. for a while, why would the refrigerator... And all the other smart devices, like your Come TV, have any of that kind of stuff. That's right. yeah. And again, most of these new devices are designed to call home. My printer often says, hey, you need more <laughs> print, I mean, more ink. And it throws up a thing and sends me to their website <laughs> asking me to buy more ink. So these, all these devices are smart devices. They're phoning home or emailing home, mm, at, yeah. at whichever way you want to say it. And the reality is... These smart hacker guys, man, they can hack that stuff like it's no tomorrow. Well, Absolutely. especially when, when there's no protection. They're going to take the path least right. resistance. Right. And, and again, ultimately, there's a buck to be had. That's what they're looking to do. You know, that's why they're starting to... Because it's, it's really difficult to hack big companies and right. banks. Yeah. Okay, it's a lot easier to hack people on an individual basis because most people have little or no idea as to what they're up against. And as you said, the, the hackers are getting more and more sophisticated. And it's very easy. I mean, you can buy this... Software, writing software, things like right. that, off the shelf. I mean, oh, yeah. I, when I went out and I actually went in there, I, put, I, I googled, you know, rat software, and it's like Oops. free trial. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's it's really scary when most people really have no idea. Be afraid of downloading their free trial because they'll probably get their stuff into your their hooks into your machine by yeah, doing that. The NSA has yeah. already put stuff in your machine before they shipped it to you. Yeah, exactly. You know, I don't know if you remember seeing that article. It was one yeah. of the things that they got caught with their pants down. What they were doing is when the computer would be shipped to UPS to go to your house, right. they stop it, open it up, right. put the tracking chips wow. in it, close yeah. it back up, and then ship it to you. I didn't oh. see that. Yeah, so th incredible. there's all kinds of crazy stuff oh, that's yeah. going on. One of the other things the NSA did was they, they were, uh, to make it easy for them to decrypt a lot of the encryption software, right. they bought several encryption companies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, again, when we wrote the articles today, we, we talk about the surveillance society as if it's in the future, but the reality is it's, here now, it's baby. actually we're been here for a while yeah. and getting and bigger all the and time and it's getting just more and more pervasive yeah. and more and more layers yeah. so really the surveillance society is really what well, part of the surveillance society if you really want to talk yeah. about because there's yeah. many different Sectors. parts yeah sure uh, well, and, and the scary thing is you know you, you can't walk down the street without you know being going on seen. camera somewhere you, you can't you can't get in your car and drive we'll talk about yeah. v2v right. technology mm -hmm. which they're coming out with which they're actually the government is pushing heavily right. yeah all right you can't go to the mall and guess what you can't stay home either because they can get you there, <laughs> right? I mean, what was it uh, a few months ago, Miss Teen USA? Right. Some somebody hacked into her computer using ratting technology and literally got naked pictures of her, and then went and extorted her. Wow! Because to give me fact, more naked yeah, pictures, right? Or, or money, <laughs> you know? And in fact, the dude was actually picked up by the FBI because he wasn't. She wasn't the only one that that you know he was doing it to. He was breaking into a lot of a lot of wow. computers. Right. Well, you know, it was like you look at all these. Um, the um, 
King of celebrities, they're always worried about the paparazzi, you know. No, you don't have to they worry about it anymore. Paparazzi, no, of course yeah. not. They can break right into your home computer and get all they want, you know. Yeah. Now, I know we did an article on the ratting about a year and a half ago. And, again, this is technology that's not necessarily new. Mm -hmm. The computers are a little more secure today because when, when it was really starting out, most of the computers had no way of you right. knowing where they were turning that stuff on and on. Now they have it where... The light's going to come on if the camera's coming on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Before, you could disable it and all that That's kind right. of stuff. You know, so it's really scary to the average person. But again, most of these people are like their horses with them blinders on. That's yeah. right. They're, they're just idea. running down the street That's and right. they don't care that it's happening. Mm -hmm. It's not affecting me until their ID gets, you know, stolen yeah. or yeah. something like absolutely. that. Absolutely. And then their life becomes they're, a living hell. They don't hell. take the precautionary, right. the precautionary methods, absolutely. And I think, you know, manufacturers of, of a lot of these video surveillance softwares that you're referring to, or for every action, there's equal opposite Absolutely. reaction. So they're taking usually made by the same manufacturer. By usually the way. so, <laughs> but, you know, they're, they're taking proactive measures to try and eliminate some of these things. Password protected, right. username, passwords, logs, so we can see actions taking place in the mm -hmm. system and things on those. Yeah, lines. I know that when we did the uh, the social media attack thing that we did uh, last year, I there was a the FBI site actually has a really good list of things that you can do. And we put that on the site yeah. for people to download. But one of the simplest things to do is just use a bigger password. I mean, Absolutely. Instead of using six characters, use it eight or 12 characters. Complexity. It makes it one hell of a lot harder to get in there yeah. and guess it, you know. So just some, sometimes just simple little behaviors can save you. Like, don't open that email that says free stuff yeah. from Nicaragua or wherever. <laughs> <laughs> or change your password yeah, on you know. a 90-day period. Right. You know, Changing your password. The problem yeah. is most people can't remember them. That's right. the yeah. problem. Well, that yeah, and everything that you've got has passwords on it anymore. So and most people, you only use one password. As ironic as that <laughs> is, they have the software you don't do. too. <laughs> <laughs> they have softwares to hold your passwords as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and again, I don't, I don't think it's all bad. Again, if you look at the financial institutions, they all track everything you do. Absolutely. But the reality is, in a way, they're protecting you because... I know I'll get a call from American Express asking me, hey, did you buy something in uh, New Jersey? I said, no, I'm not in New Jersey. Yeah, yeah. You know, that kind of stuff happens. Right, and that's because their software is now tracking yeah. where they think yep. you are. So if you just bought Trends. a candy bar in the 7-Eleven yeah. and now it sees you up in, you know, Timbuktu, Absolutely. it's going to be calling you yeah. right away. Yeah. And that's a really useful thing. By the same token, a lot of times they catch criminals with all this surveillance stuff. There was a person who hit, was a hit and run not very long ago. Mm -hmm. They went through the red light camera. Mm -hmm. The camera got their license plate. They picked them up in two hours. Wow. But yeah, the problem is now the uh, you know law enforcement has license plate readers that will read every license plate that's driving oh, yeah. through a neighborhood. So, you know, we're, we're, how much is too much? You know, that's the problem. It's always been the problem. Uh, we, you know, we where do, do you draw a line? There's no line. Uh, we do a lot right of license now. plate recognition, gated mm -hmm. communities and things on those lines, catching 95% of every tag entering mm -hmm. a resident facility. Yeah. Uh, and you know you have to you have to ponder the question: Is it a good or bad thing? And I know that's kind of what we're talking about here, right? I mean, yeah. nobody enjoys we're to be watched, but to, to what you were mentioning just a moment ago, there there are some proactive measures that we take advantage of in a positive light mm -hmm. to help eliminate some of these things. Yeah. So the, the thing is, if you don't really have anything to hide, yeah, it's usually not a problem yeah. unless your government turns on you. <laughs> that's the only thing. That you really got to watch out for. Well, Which we, it's not just the government. Like I said, every there people, you know, there are companies out there data mining. You know, yeah. everybody has got their hooks yeah, into and you. That, and that's a big problem because again, these big companies are trying very hard to be profitable. That's right. But by the same token, if they're not really covering their butts, yeah, they can be hacked. And, well, that's and now, problem. right? Then now the everything. criminals have all your exactly. information. Well, right, Target. I mean, we just we just did that one. Target. Yeah, yeah, big Healthcare.gov is a really good example. The reason I haven't signed up for it right. is because exactly. I know that yeah. it's absolutely no. vulnerable. Yeah, it's it's a you joke, know? right? <laughs> Kevin Mitnick. The, yeah, Kevin his, Mitnick. His He's like, hey, that. I can go in there and let me blink an eye and I'm in. Right. Yeah, <laughs> and I would believe him because he is really. Uh, they call him a white hat guy, but yeah. he was really a black hat from black hat hacker from hell for a long time. And Although he didn't do anything with the information, he was just doing it almost as a game to him. Right. You know, it's not like he was breaking into banks and but, taking but money. There out, are these which other guys have. like Anonymous right. and you know these really right. heavy duty hackers that are attacking Citibank and all that come kind of regularly. As a matter of fact, I have a list of major hacks that have happened in the last year and a half. So Target. Mm -hmm. Sony PlayStation, which they wow. they sucked down half their that. database. Uh, Nordstrom, well, Citibank. I was going to say about 50 banks. Yeah, yeah, yeah lots and lots of banks. Uh, the Egyptian government. Google got whacked for a whole bunch of Gmails, especially the ones that were tied to the Chinese um, 
uh, guys who were protesting all the stuff that's right. happening in China. Uh, PBS got hacked. HB Gary Federal, which is a big, huge security firm. Right, they got hacked. <laughs> they got hacked. The U.S. Senate, Mastercard, Visa, PayPal, Blockbusters, um, the CIA. That's just a partial list. NASA, 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 NASA got hacked. Yeah. So I mean, when you look at the number, of, and these guys have really good security, and they're yeah. getting hacked regularly. Well, you want to know what the ironic thing is? Okay, you know, you know, you know what the entire Target hacking started yeah. with. Two teenagers. Yep. Okay, if we can't protect ourselves from a couple of teenagers, we're in trouble. Yeah. I mean, and, and uh, these were not, you know, these are not international criminals, you know, these were yeah. not, you know, uh, uh, cyber warriors. These are two kids that have nothing better to do, and they managed to come up with the code that cracked one of the most secure systems that they have out right. there for, right. for business. And, and God forbid it's China or some other, you know, Powerhouse. third world consortium that they just let's throw a lot of resources yeah. at at you yeah. but but yeah. the thing is though here and, and and we've said this before too the problem with most people is they make it too easy right. yeah okay because uh, like i said if if you uh, of course you're in a security Absolutely. business okay so if somebody has a say a you know surveillance camera that's wireless yeah and that you know when you're out and about you can get on your little Smart cell device. phone here sure. and you can say okay i want to see what's happening in my house well, what's to keep the bad guys from hacking into that and doing the same thing yeah and we go back to the username and password productivity and the logs and right. things on those lines and then of course um the accessibility are they aware of what what pinholes are open in your network and allowing that thing out on the network and things on those lines? i know that when i was a tech guy which i was for 30 years i'd often go to pretty secure business offices they'd have another router inside mm -hmm. And it was wireless, and generally it was always unsecure. Oh, I could yeah. usually go in there and hack that in seconds. Mm -hmm. I could sit out of my car in front of the building exactly. and get into their network in no time at all. And this is the kind of thing when somebody today goes out and buys a Cisco router or whatever, and they stick it in their house, mm -hmm. they just want it to hook up and go yeah. so they can watch their movies. It's the they world of convenience. About, yeah, they don't care about all the security stuff. Yeah, and, and generally they don't secure it. Right, they and if all your security work. system is hooked into that router, right. that's that's another point of access. You yeah. know, they don't have to beat the the machine; they just beat the router. They just right. beat your network. Right. So, like I said, there's more than one way in the door, but if you leave the door unlocked. Yeah. And there's no the way to, to, to totally secure it. I mean, it has to yeah. be a two-way street. If you want Internet information to come to you, mm -hmm. you also got to be able to send stuff out. So right. it's got to have holes in it yeah. some way, shape, or form. Yeah, right. bi-directional, yeah. absolutely. I mean, so th that's always going to be happening. The, the bottom line is we end up having with the good, the bad, and the ugly. I mean, the good is, obviously, that allows us to be able to catch criminals after the fact in many cases. <laughs> it allows, you know, people from stealing your ID and all that kind of stuff. The bad is that it can be abused right, they can use very that easily. Against you. The government can be used to right. use it against you. You know, if God forbid our government went crazy and they, they let's you say mean crazier, crazier, <laughs> and they start you know tracking <laughs> everybody crazy. for anything, and then they just start persecuting people, mm -hmm. like in the fifties when they were doing all the communist scares and stuff right. like that. So, well, you know, that, that's one of the big reasons. Like right here, is the New York City judge actually restricted some surveillance that they were doing in New York City because they they've got they've got helicopters, they've got vans. I mean, since nine eleven, they've just gone you know surveillance happy, right. and there's like nobody there to stop them. So literally, the uh, there were several uh, you know, organizations that had sued New York City because of the fact that these guys were like you know on a rampage with the surveillance. One one guy even got a um, a call from a. Uh, 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 what was it, a, a reporter that said, uh, have you uh, seen the news? He goes, no. He goes, well, let me tell you before, you know, you read your morning newspaper, but the uh, New York City police have a picture of you and your girlfriend making out for about 20 minutes on your balcony. But it was, there was some type of a protest being staged down below, and the helicopters, you know, you can't even see them. Yeah. They're so high, and they're, they're stationed. It's like the flares and everything, they can yeah. see through the dark. Exactly. And, 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 and they, were, they were supposed to be focusing on this, you know, crowd down below, but uh, the guys that were operating the camera being guys right, found something more interesting up on the 17th floor, <laughs> which was this guy and his girlfriend, and they got the whole thing in living color for like 10, 15 minutes, yeah. and, and the reporter, I guess somebody he had a contact in the police department that had seen the footage that told him about this, and he told the dude, I mean, you know, and, and all kinds of hell broke loose because of that. Oh, well, that gets down to the ugly. The good yeah. and the ugly, exactly. <laughs> good good is, you know, we've got the opportunity right. to prevent these things and, and also catch these things. Uh, some of the bads are that, unfortunately, people administering these systems have a moral and ethical responsibility right. to, to administer them properly. And again, uh, my, my thing is, 
power corrupts. Mm -hmm. And absolute power corrupts absolutely. absolutely. And the more power you have, the more likely you start sliding down that slope. But the thing is, criminals don't care. Right about good or bad or Absolutely ethics not. or anything like that, Absolutely they're not. already on the bad side of the yeah. slope. <laughs> you know, so them getting the postage stamp trackers and all this other kind of stuff that they can have, you know. Yeah, but the problem is, though, is that when you've got the government using it against, you know, lawful right. assemblies and things like that, which that goes back to COINTELPRO back, you know, back in the 60s and 70s right. that was busted wide open when the FBI was doing a lot of, of That's why they, they created the Wiener Act and all those kinds of oh. things so that you couldn't tape people's conversations without telling them yeah. and all this kind of stuff. Concerned. Well, all those laws are out there with them now. I mean, yeah, with, the, with the NSA and after 9-11, yeah. they could pretty much track anything they want. I mean, if they were able to download 194 million text messages, you know, over a two or three month period, <laughs> they could pretty much snatch anything, anything. they want. Absolutely. You know, and, and that's the that's the drawback. Again, there's nobody watching the watcher. We that's did right. a show not very long ago. Yep. We were talking about is Google watching you? Well, really, nobody's watching the watcher. And that's part of the problems that we have to have. We have to have some kind of oversight. I mean, I want to catch terrorists. I want to catch <laughs> criminals yeah, and all those right. kinds of things. But I don't want them going crazy. They don't need to, you know, pay Google X number of dollars and say, give me your entire feed. <laughs> Which is what they've been done, doing, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and like I said, you know, you've got these webcams on everything. So I mean, we're going to be buying a whole lot of duct tape pretty soon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah those special new security devices. You just yeah. put a little piece of duct tape right there. Boop, stops. Yeah. Yeah. They can't take your picture. Yeah, I think it's a necessary evil, unfortunately, yeah. but true. And and who's watching the watchers? I mean, the most adequate term I've heard in regards to yeah. being on top of your. The evil. only one who's watching the watchers, obviously, it's got to be us. And yeah. I don't mean me and Carl society. and you. I'm talking about society Absolutely. has to step up to the plate and say, hey, stop doing this. And right now, there are people saying stop doing this. There are people in Congress saying stop doing yeah, but it. The people that are saying stop doing it are the ones that are getting most of the surveillance used against them. Right. <laughs> yeah, I think you know part of the part of the problem is that as a society we've become this convenient factor where we want all these compatible devices right. and these technologies in place, oh, yeah. um, and and we're a, a society of convenience. So right. some of these things we're talking about passwords and preparing yourself for these digital you know repercussions don't really come into play. Before we go off the air, we want to make sure that we uh, talk about our sponsors again. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank uh, Tub King and Senior Bath for uh, sponsoring the show. I mean, again, they have specials going on on their website right now. Right. Uh, people who see the show will be able to find the links on the website. Um, I know that they have three big specials and brand new products that have just now uh, started bringing into the States. Um, yeah. Also, MedMaster, which is the only medically uh, oriented social media mm -hmm. company here, actually in the world. Wow. They're like the LinkedIn for medical for the medical industry so yeah. people who want to really get connected in the medical industry medmasters.com is the way to go booming industry Carl, I know you had a worldwide where did you want yeah to I'm gonna say that in a minute but I'll close out the show with that but there's one other thing I want to talk about we'll talk about what we're gonna do next week okay uh, because next week we're gonna take a different side of the same equation because have you heard about the internet of everything no which is basically a term that was co coined by Cisco but it relates to the fact that all of our devices now are, are getting to the point right. where they're going to be able to communicate with each oh, other, yeah. communicate with the outside world, and everything. They basically business wants everything to be interconnected for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we're going to talk about uh, a lot of the questions that are being raised by that, as as well as trying to give people an idea of what's going on. Because, like I said, one of the things that they haven't really talked a lot about, which is, start which is just starting to make some inroads into the media, is the vehicle to vehicle technology. We're literally they're going to, within 10 years, have everybody's cars wired to the point where if you're coming up to an intersection and a car is coming at you, the car will either take Cease. control from you yeah. or it'll say, hey, stop, yeah. dummy. Yeah. Okay, kind of scary, you know. kind of scary, especially when you think about, remember the Terminator movies. I used movies. to have a wife that sat in the, <laughs> the right seat that would do that to me, you <laughs> the know. Ter <laughs> the Terminator <laughs> movies. <Never> anymore. <laughs> so... <laughs> that free will is, is being dissipated, it feels I'll like. I'll tell you, it's, it's, it's on the will, way out. Free will, what's that? Yeah. I want to have an accident. <laughs> anyway, I think the Terminator stuff will be sort of fun, too. Cause <laughs> I, uh, we'll, we'll get the Terminator Easter eggs or something in there. Um, I know you got the worldwide weird, so tell, bring, lay it on us. Okay, well, okay, because we're almost running out of time here. Last minute. Okay, a little while ago, we, we actually had a, a, an article we found online where they were talking about robotic cockroaches. Wow. Where you could remote control cockroaches. These things were even on Kickstarter, all right? Well, I found something. I thought that was going to be the ultimate and weird <laughs> that science come up with, but I was wrong. 
because now some scientists have actually figured out a way to turn paramecium into a play, uh, like a, po a pong game and they, they've actually turned this through they have a joystick and they put these things they actually take wow. a an iPhone and they take these electrodes where if they put if they make the uh, I guess they can change the magnetic polarity and they can actually drive these little critters paramecium around and, and, and form a living video game Wow. <laughs> Okay, which again shows you that some guys have too much brains for their own and good. And somebody yeah. probably okay. got a three or four million dollar grant to do that. Yeah, yeah well, <laughs> it, well, Ian says here, you know, you talk about guys with lab coats and, and gloves, eating boxes of pizza, and looking at flashing LED lights. I mean, that's basically what these guys do in their spare time. Yeah. yeah. So that was another world, world, worldwide weird concept. That's pretty weird. Probably wouldn't believe it unless you've seen it here, but it was actually in Forbes. Okay. Wow. <laughs> in Forbes Forbes. magazine of all places. So. <laughs> I know we're out of time. Um, I just want to say, uh, Thanks for our guests listening uh, in today. Thank and you for joining us, Paul. And thank Paul for no coming in today. Thanks for having me. And other than that, let's keep, keep working, working the web. <laughs>